Hi, I'd like to talk to you about how a non-standard concentration impacts cell potential. This is qualitative, uh, where you could be um, <clears throat> given non-standard conditions, and just by looking at the ratio of the products over the reactants, you could predict how the cell potential will change. Um, so I'm going to give you the background, and then I'm going to prove this with the Nernst equation, okay, with the formula. Um, so you'll recall the standard con concentration is one molar. It's one molar, and uh, that's when our E naught has that little, uh, the standard reduction potential has that little knot, we're at standard conditions. This is going to be when Q equals one. Now, the further we get from equilibrium, uh, the greater the cell potential. So I want you to um, think back to my example of the waterfall. Potential is voltage, and voltage is what pushes the electrons. Um, so, you know, if we're at the top of the mountain, bottom of the mountain, and the water's flowing, and the water moves um, from top to bottom all by itself, um, that's like electrons, okay? And you can think the higher the waterfall, the greater the potential. All right, potential is an energy of distance. So. Um, to take something that's kind of abstract, like voltage, and make it contextual, I want you to picture this waterfall. Um, so when we're at standard conditions, there's the waterfall, all right? Um, keep that in your mind. Now, as the system moves toward equilibrium, the cell potential decreases until Q equals K. So literally, what happens is as the concentrations are being consumed, um, as we're using up those concentrations, the potential, so this waterfall, it actually, the potential, there's less push. It gets smaller, smaller, smaller until uh, Q equals K, and then there's no more voltage to push it. Um, so look at the uh, deviations. Deviations from standard cell potential that take the cell further from equilibrium increase the potential. So if we have something that's further from equilibrium, guess what it does? <gasps> makes the waterfall higher. There's an even greater voltage that can push those electrons, okay? So the further we are from equilibrium, the greater the potential, because everything in nature is driven by stability and energy, um, drives toward that stability of equilibrium. And the further you go from equilibrium, the greater the drive, all right, the voltage, the push, to bring it to equilibrium. So the further from equilibrium, the greater the potential. You can think the higher the waterfall. And I'll come and explain this in just a second. Um, now, look at the second one. Deviations from standard potential that bring the cell closer to equilibrium, that decreases the potential. So here's my potential standard conditions. If I'm approaching equilibrium, getting closer, the potential's actually lower. Interesting, the potential's lower. There's a, um, the voltage isn't as high. That push, that drive isn't as large. Interesting, because we're nearing that equilibrium. Um, spontaneous electron flow is determined by the direction to reach equilibrium. Again, everything naturally, spontaneously, thermodynamically, favorably drives toward equilibrium. Now, how you can put this all together, because I know that this um, seems abstract. Um, right here, these are going to be the two keys. We're looking at a qualitative analysis of this. Um, so further from equilibrium, guess what that means? you have more reactants and less products. Let me say it again. If we are further from equilibrium, you have more reactants, more reactants, less products. You haven't made as much. You haven't reached that beautiful equilibrium of equal rates. Um, so Q is less than K. You have more reactants than products. So R stands for reactants, P stands for products. I wanna prove this to you. Look at the Nernst equation with me. If I have a Q that is less than one. That means that I have, uh, so just a reminder here, remember Q, this is going to be at any moment, at any given time, it's products of a reactant. So if Q is less than one, it means that the reactants are greater than the products. I have a bigger denominator, so I'm going to have a, a fraction, a number less than one. So if you take the natural log of any decimal, okay, any number less than one, guess what? It's negative negative times negative, that means you take your standard cell potential and you end up adding a value to it, which makes the voltage, the potential higher. Um, now, just opposite. If we have deviations from the standard cell potential that bring the equilibrium closer, so it's going to decrease the cell potential. Why? Because Q is greater than K, um, which means the reactants are less than products. 
we have more products. We've, the um, reaction's gone, gone, gone. We have more products at this point. So in this case, let's draw this line. Q, remember again, products over reactants. And if Q is greater than one, it means that we have more products. Products are greater than reactants. So if I have more, a larger number on the top, the so numerator, it means I may have a number greater than one. If I have a number greater than one, natural log of anything greater than one is a negative number. Um, so sorry, is a positive number. So positive times negative gives me a negative. <gasps> standard potential minus a number. We go from standard potential minus a number to a smaller potential, to a smaller potential. So there's the justification. This was the Nernst equation. Um, what I tell my students is to think we're driving toward equilibrium. So I've got to consume reactants and make products to drive toward equilibrium. Um, if I have a lot of reactants, greater potential. If I have fewer reactants, more products, lower potential because I'm close to reaching that equilibrium. So there are your big takeaways. There are your big takeaways. If you have more reactants and products than at an equilibrium situation, bigger potential because it's going to drive to consume reactants, make products, bring it to equilibrium. If you have more products than reactants compared to your equilibrium, um, or um, on your Q right here, that Q is greater than K, um, that means that we have a smaller potential, um, that driving to equilibrium, it doesn't have the same voltage, it doesn't have as much of a push as the standard conditions. So there are your takeaways. Here, um, if you need to read them one more time, kind of chew on them and digest them, take some time. Um, if you have other questions on redox or electrochemistry, check out my playlist entitled Redox Electrochemistry. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Lean Think.